Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else watching. Welcome to the much-awaited Vaxe versus Malashevsky show match. The tournament's GOAT Vaxe undefeated for several years now in any tournament match whatsoever versus the new kid on the block, Malashevsky, in a sense, Bubble Man's replacement, someone who has played almost any and every tournament around looking to build the tournament consistency and reputation of someone who is undefeatable in tournaments, looking to open up a spot on Vaxe's current throne. My name is Dio, and I'm here to cast this match alongside Miles. Good afternoon, Miles. A very good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a great afternoon. We're watching Vaxe versus Malashevsky. If you were to compare this to something like real life sports, this might just be something like LeBron James versus Michael Jordan, uh, Lionel Messi versus Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, I don't know, Roger Federer versus Novak Djokovic. These are pretty much the two best players we've had basically in the last decade, both very, very dominant in their own times. Obviously, Vaxe hasn't really played much in this era. I think his last major 1v1 tournament was Yuki Aim tournament in uh, 2021, yep. which he did win undefeated, of course. But since then, it's really been the Malashevsky show. So I guess this is kind of going to be kind of going to be seeing if Vaxe can turn back time here. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, it's a much harder pool. It's a much harder map pool. That said, uh, the pool in Yuki Aim, I think, is definitely uh, around the same difficulty as this one, actually, or at least approaching it. So there's certainly a lot of there's certainly a lot of speculation around whether Vaxe can compete on the higher star rating pools. We already saw Malashevsky be able to put up really, really high scores on the Corsair's closed pool last weekend, so not as much speculation. We know this guy's good up to like eight and a half stars or so. But yeah, for Vaxe, it was always like, I feel like we always knew he would be able to play a map pool of this caliber, but he just wasn't really active in the time where where we really saw it. I mean, Corsair's close, I think, this year, pushing boundaries to what's acceptable in a map pool. We finally found the long-awaited skill cap of Malachevsky. Emrek, gonna, or he did abuse the skill cap against Malachevsky, but still, I think this pool's still going to be in Malachevsky's wheelhouse, and the big question mark is really just Vaxe in this match. Well, if uh, if recent streams and recent scores set by Vaxe are any indicator, I think he's going to be relatively solid anyway <laughs> on a map pool like this. Yeah. Like you said, I think it, it was just a matter of the times. So he just really didn't play in a time where map pools this difficult were acceptable in the tournament scene. Where if you if you found a map pool of this difficulty. A, the maps just kind of didn't exist, right? And B, the players were not really there. They, they just weren't quite as strong as they are today on any map pool, pretty much. So I think a lot of a lot of this is going to come down to Vaxe being able to apply the skill cap and consistency he had from years past to a pool of this caliber. Also, uh, we'll, we'll take a look closer look at this when we get to the map pool, but I think some of the map pool composition might end up favoring one player or another because there are skill sets that Vaxe was weaker on or stronger on, depending on the sort of map. Even though he was usually one of the best players on a map, he wasn't always the best player on a given map during tournaments with teams. Yeah, if you remember back way back when, it was Bubble Man and Wubbuff Wolf who really abused gimmick into Vaxe. Although the maps back then were not nearly as gimmicky as the maps today, it was still something that it wasn't necessarily a super reliable win because Vaxe did, you know, go completely undefeated. But it was something that a player like Bubble Man or Wubbuff Wolf could win at least like two thirds of the time. And I think on a map pool like this, that really pushes gimmick to the extreme on some of the maps like that Nomad 6 or that Hidden 2. Probably going to be things that Malashevsky will look into, maybe could be a ban from Vaxe, but then on the other end, we saw it last week, I think Vaxe is going to go into, I think, the high mechanics up against Malashevsky. Things like the DT1, the Nomad 5, speed in general, probably going to go his way, but I think AIM is going to be a really, really tough matchup to call against these two players, and I'm really going to be, I guess, curious to see who decides to pick some AIM. Also, look at these scores on this warm-up, by the way. This map is almost eight stars as well. Both yeah, of them... They're, yeah, they're looking pretty good. They're, they're, they're looking pretty good. Um, I have to say, 
I have to say, they definitely look solid on this map. Very, very close. I hope this is how the rest of the match goes. Yeah, I'm just really interested to see exactly how this match breaks down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the map pool and talk a little bit about, like, what we expect from the picks for both of these players. Because I feel like once they get going, it's going to be relatively fast. It is a 1v1 after all. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit, shall we? Um, I feel like you're going to see bans on reading and or alt from Vaxe and probably bans on hard rock from Malashevsky. Thoughts? Uh, I think that's pretty accurate. You know, we could see bans on speed from Malashevsky as well, but I really don't know how Vaxe will fend on this high speed. Things like Just Awake DT, Kimi no Kyoku. I think Malashevsky has an FC on that, doesn't he? Malashevsky does have an FC on Kimi no Kyoko, yeah. Okay, so he's he's not going to be very afraid of that map. But I think, not. I think what Vaxe will want to pick, though, is probably some of the Nomad speedier maps. Something like that Nomad 2 or the Nomad 5. Probably going to be picks for Vaxe. Maybe bans for Malashevsky. But I'm pretty sure you're you're accurate in your analysis on the rest. Probably hard rock bans for Malashevsky. Yeah. Maybe something like that HR 4 or 3. I think one and two probably stay open. Hard Rock two maybe just might as well be a Malashevsky pick. Ryoshi no Umino Linworm, that is alt aim control. Yeah, that one definitely staying open. Again, Vaxi not particularly an alt player. Uh, usually very, very good on Hard Rock, but that, Hard Rock two not particularly in his favor. I think on something like Angel Salad, he's gonna be much better off. But I, uh, the Hard Rock 3 as well is 146 BPM. You've got two alt maps in this Hard Rock pool. I think very, very good for Malashevsky in a matchup like this. Um, that said, the hidden pool, a little less ulti. There's only one of them in that pool. So you might actually see Vaxe go into the hidden pool a little bit when it doesn't come to the reading maps. I think that low AR hidden probably banned out against Malashevsky and Vaxe potentially going into the rest of the pool with like you said speed mechanics and probably some like dt tech i don't know who this dt4 favors because both of these players are really good at that skill set i couldn't tell you either but one thing i'd like to point out is the hd2 isn't necessarily all too hard of a reading map so to say it's ar8 but i think it's really mostly going to be focused on that grid snap aim dazzle hop Something that Vaxe, like back in the day, Vaxe was a very competent reading player, even though it was often picked into him. If his opponent wasn't necessarily ready, it was something that Vaxe was able to strike on and take some breakpoints off of. So I think probably Nomad 6 will be a lot more scary for Vaxe than something like the Hidden 2. But the rest of the Hidden Pool probably could be a toss-up, but you probably favor Malashevsky just on the virtue of, you know, it's Malashevsky. That guy's the hidden player of all time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that... Uh definitely will help um uh, I'm, I'm very ready for very ready for him to show us what he's got on some of the hidden picks as uh i'm very glad we had warm-ups because malashevsky's pin does not doing? show combo by the way what is vaxay doing he is uh, still going yes, i think that's an fc yeah i'm, I'm pretty uh, sure yeah vaxay by the way if any of you forgot who he was or didn't know who he was before he came back this is why he was considered the best of all time because he can do stuff like this. No way, right? He's just gonna... Way, actually. Way, way. He's gonna FC Candyland in a warm-up. Um, that is something that does happen. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's a Candyland FC in warm-up. Yeah, um, like you said, you know, this guy's pretty good, actually. He's, uh, okay, at the game, at least. Pretty all right at the game, yeah, gotta say. This is 8.6 stars. 40 BPM, awkward aim, very bursty at times, um, but generally just very, very high skill cap aim on this map. And here we go into the first map of the matchup. Miles, Malashevsky's pick. Who do you have? Uh, who do you have your sights on during this map? I think it's probably still a Malashevsky win on this map, but like you said, this is way more of a toss-up than you really expect from a first pick most of the time. Yeah, I mean, Malashevsky, if you look at any leaderboard on a map like this, it's gonna be a Malashevsky number one. This is, I think, 
As much as I said it's a toss-up pick, it's only that way because it's something that Vaxe can pretty much play fairly comfortably. See, Malashevsky still holding on to the SS, but Vaxe up at 99.6 out of the beginning. But, yeah, this is just Malashevsky's wheelhouse. The hidden aim, the fast aim. Although there are some long bursts, it's nothing that he can't handle. I think this is probably going to be a Malashevsky pick. But if Vaxe holds on, it could He's be something he steals, but he does not. And Malashevsky's going to take an early lead now. About 360 combo in the bank. Vaxe is missing a lot, and it looks already like a pick that could be dominated. Oh, but there goes the first break for Malashevsky. This is kind of what we were talking about in that there are definitely maps where Vaxe is not the best player in the game. And I think this is probably one of them. He finds another miss. Malashevsky had broken a couple times before that as well. This is still close. It's only 25k apart. Neither player with a decisive lead right now. It's a bit of an act lead, a bit of a combo lead, a bit of a score lead for Malashevsky, but nothing crazy. And like we were saying, a bit of a toss-up map, but something that Malashevsky still favored on, hoping to find the win on this one as we get into the second half. A bit more of the slow section first, though. And you know, these slow sections are really dangerous on a map like this that has some very definitive difficult sections because if Malashevsky finds a break earlier on into the next hard part, Vaxe will be able to claw back a lead. But Vaxe is going to be finding the first break into the next difficult section, so Malashevsky is going to be able to extend his lead even more, especially with that accuracy lead as well. He's going to look to start running away with this lead now blossoming up to around 70,000. So, in the last third of the map, we're really going to need a miracle for Vaxe to take this one. I want to see what kind of uh, what kind of combo Malashevsky can put up on this. He's looking very, very good on this map so far. I'm really interested to see exactly what kind of a combo he can put up in the back half here. Hit one of the hard parts. Hit the awkward below aim one third section as well. Let's see it. He's already above 400k. The the points in the bag at this point, right? So nothing more to talk about in terms of whether he wins the map or not. It's just can you combo this last PI time, the last quarter of the map, so, so difficult, even in comparison to a lot of the other sections in this map. If he actually combos through this, he's a demon. Like, actually, this part is so difficult. Can he, he do it? He's still holding, hits the slider jumps. Oh, finally finds oh, some no. slider breaks on the slider jump. <laughs> Hollow Wings one... Uh, Hollow Wings three-point jumps, sir. I forget the map they're from. Sentimental Skyscraper finally drops. 200k, though, at the end. Really, really solid score from Malashevsky and the uh, troll break here at the end. Love the mapper for this one. Mm -hmm. 8.6 stars is this map. Malashevsky, 548k. Going to be winning that one by about 200,000, a little bit more than that. Still, as we said, very definitive of a first pick for Malashevsky, although it looked a little bit dicey in some of the earlier sections. It was all it was definitely a strong pick for him, so. Gonna see how Vaxi responds here. He still has got that Nomad 2 open as well as the Nomad 5. I think he might decide to go into some of the difficult aim as well. But we're gonna have to see. So I'm looking to see who can combo the slider aim section in the middle, or if it ends up mattering at all, because again, there is a lot of those really high BPM tech stream sections, and you know, if Malashevsky is feeling like his stamina isn't particularly good right now, then it might end up just being Vaxe's win off of the fact that this is a very streamy Nomad 4. Yeah, and you know, Vaxe and Solo is very keen to play some of this high BPM tech, mechanics tech, so to speak. Something that he's very good at in Solo, as you're probably very familiar with, but both players are going to be finding drops right out of the start, and as well as some accuracy drops as well. Wow, both players go down. Vaxe goes down even further, down to 92% out of the beginning. Malashevsky holding on up at 97, but we've still got a lot of map to go, so we're going to see if Vaxe can find his footing. Here into the tech screen section, as you mentioned, already so brutal. Malashevsky finding some drops backstage and looks to take the lead here if he can hold on to some more combo. And Vaxe is holding on. Vaxe is holding on. He is still holding on. He's comboed most of this tech screen section, finally finding the break. But the lead is still in favor of Malashevsky because of its super strong accuracy. Look at him all the way almost up at 98. Such a strong performance despite the combo drop. He has found his combo back up at 350. He combos through the ending of that difficult section, and he's going to look to take a 20k lead on Vaxxay's first deck. See if 
Maliszewski can hold through the slider aim section. He does not hold through the used stream. Oh no, that was a Bancho miss. Does hold through them. Bancho really doesn't like tech maps sometimes, especially really high beat uh, snap divisor sliders like we saw in those streams. Here we go into the slider aim section though. This might just decide the map. If Maliszewski can hold here and Vaxay misses, it may as well be over. But Maliszewski is the first one to find a slider break instead. Vaxay able to hold through this part. Does he hold through the entire section is the question. The score lead should start to swap over soon, but it's still about 20k right now. Vaxe looking to take the lead back once again on this Nomad 4 pick, hitting the Sliderator sliders as well. The sliders that slow down in the middle of them. Definitely some new gen tech in there, but Vaxe still holding on. No tournament wins since 2021. No problem for someone who never rusts guy just holds through one of the most difficult sections in the map held before then through a lot of the streams as well and is looking to secure the for the, the the print the point with the next tech stream section it's the whole <laughs> infinity sign stream there doesn't even drop ack on that part of the map and can he hold through the ending is the question now this part is so so difficult the spacing, the wiggles, everything in this part so tricky. Maxi misaims the stream, and Malashevsky does have combo right now, but there's only so much math left. Can he hold on long enough to take the point? No, he cannot. It's going to go to Vaxe. The combo during the slider in section too much for anyone to combat. Yeah, despite the large accuracy deficit for Vaxe in the middle section of the map, that big combo he was able to hold is going to balloon him up to a victory on this Nomad 4. I, I personally question this first pick, but you know, it worked out in the end. Vaxe proving why he decided to go with it. Nomad 4, high BPM tech is his. Gonna be winning that one. Gonna be evening up the score now, one apiece. He got 1100 combo on that. That is completely unreal. Out comboing Maliszewski. <laughs> Even with the accuracy lead, Maliszewski, full percent ahead. And you know, on a pool this hard, accuracy matters a lot more than I think a lot of people think. But Vaxe making use of the combo finally, so. Gonna see how Malshevsky responds to this. I think this is something that a lot of people didn't really expect to go the way of Vaxe, but he's just proving why he's the GOAT. Yeah, I mean, you see the full combo on Candyland right before the match starts. Can't help but think maybe the tech map is contested at the very least. Yeah, just but, maybe. Uh, you know, Vaxe, again, still one of the best tech players in the game. Uh, it's not as if he ever really stopped being good at tech either. He just hasn't shown up in a long time hasn't played the game in a long time but that's not going to stop him from taking this point and it's not going to stop Maliszewski from continuing his own pick strategy going into the alt pick in hidden this is not really normal alt though this is essentially an Aquaro map but in hidden there's the the low AR reading you know, easy player Aquaro map and then there's the new gen devious panda finger control Ikoro map and that is what we have here both of these players well versed in this style of mapping 2021 when Vaxe made his last run of a couple big tournaments was when those maps were really starting to get introduced in their hole but they were around in both OWC 2020 and in a couple tournaments before that as well so it's not going to be something he's super unfamiliar with at all in tournament Maloshevsky though kind of grew up in the age of a Quoro Devious Panda finger control maps in tournament. And uh, with Hidden On, this is right up his alley. This is exactly the kind of map that he wants to see in the Hidden Pool. Look at the accuracy already. 99% to 95, 96. Finally, a drop comes through for Maliszewski, though. Vaxi now. Miles, you were talking about combo game on the last map. Never mind. I Why speak? It's over. Yep. yep. Finding the break. Vaxi <laughs> now at a huge disadvantage. A lot of it down to the accuracy, but some of the drops Maliszewski had really tanking his accuracy down to mid-96, but when compared to Vaxe's low 94, it's not really going to be too much. And I think Maliszewski, as long as he's able to hold on to a little combo, should be looking to run into the ending with this one. Still half of the map to go, but I think it's going to already take a miracle as Vaxe down at 100 combo, Maliszewski breaking his 330 combo. Hold on a second, he drops a lot of accuracy too. We might have a map on our hands. Vaxe holding on to the combo, as well as the accuracy surpassing Maliszewski. And the lead has also gone way down, back down to 20k, but Vaxe finds the drop. Maliszewski now gonna look to start running away with the lead once again as the accuracy goes back in his favor and the lead balloons up to 40,000. But I think the ending is really gonna determine this. Who can hit it better? 
yeah, this map is evil. Tons of different beat snap divisors in this, and the accuracy, like you said, playing a major role now, finally, with Maloshevsky dropping the accuracy down. You can see exactly how much the combo is going to matter here. 100 combo up for Maloshevsky going into the ending. Does drop on one of the aim control patterns. One of those one-third triples is what might give Vaxe the win on this map. Maloshevsky drops on one of them. Vaxe finally drops as well in turn. And it's a 40k score lead, but that's going to be enough for Maloshevsky to take this pick up 2-1. to one. The picks going the way you expect them to so far. Each player just winning their own picks for the first three maps. 2-1 to one in Maloshevsky's favor, Vaxe with the next pick. And you can see by the end of the map, both of those players really struggling in the accuracy department. 93% for both players really expected on a map like that, where you have not only one-third, one-fourth, one-sixth, but also some one-fifth and one-seventh in, in the editor, if you take a look. So, uh, yeah, very, very difficult to act, something like that. Also, a couple of, I think those were one-twelfth doubles uh, earlier on in the map. Very, very tricky stuff to act, and uh, honestly, really incredible that Maloshevsky held such good act for such a long time on that map anyway. And I feel like this should just be a map that is very favored to Vaxe. And shoutouts to Takeda, by the way. This is a custom map for the show match. Definitely something I'm feeling is favored towards Vaxe. That said, it's only 239 BPM. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, Melchewski really struggles a lot more with the higher BPM speed stamina. That's why you see the ban out on double time three, for example. But on a map like this, it might be doable for him to take a break point. That said, he said his stamina was not feeling as good as it usually does going into this match. Pretty much, I think this comes down to whether his stamina has recovered or not, and I don't think it has. Nope. Drops a lot of combo, a lot of accuracy, down to 92% act for Maloshevsky now going into the finger control section here. And this map never really stops. You get the long stream section into finger control and first spam into more long streams into some almost tech stream shapes at 240 BPM. These wiggle streams are really what makes this map so difficult to combo through. At this point, it's not a question of whether Vaxe will win, only how high the score will go. Wait a minute. Maybe, okay, maybe, actually. He has completely dropped all stamina, it looks oh, like. Oh, no. Not able to hit any of the streams I spoke too soon, as Maloshevsky now actually has a little bit of an ack advantage, not by much, but by a little bit. And it might just come down to how well they do in the second half here. That said, Maloshevsky not able to hold the combo. Vaxe not able to hold the combo. Can anyone put up a decisive combo in this map? It looks like it's actually Maloshevsky able to hold on better, able to not drop score, not drop combo, and not drop accuracy. And it's the score lead shrinking toward Maloshevsky now in the back half of this map, back into the first spam section as both players able to finally hold on during this part. Is that enough for Maloshevsky to take it? He has combo lead and act lead by 3% going into the ending here, Miles. It might just be enough. The score lead shrinking down to less than 20,000 as Maloshevsky continues to hold. He hits the wiggle stream. Oh my god, they both find drops. But I think Vaxe's combo in the beginning just might be enough to edge it out over Maloshevsky's accuracy lead. It is almost 4%. But Vaxe's early combo, wait a minute, he finds another drop in the ending. Now Shevsky has a combo, 100 combo lead. Spin to win! It's a battle spinner, it's a spin to win! Vaxe gonna oh take it! Oh my god, it's, it's... 500 points! <laughs> what? It's 546 points to the margin of victory for Vaxe. Combo game, once again, comes out on top by the absolute slimmest of margins. And it, oh looks like, it looks like the tournament client was actually incorrect, by the way, if you look at the MP link, but it is still a Vaxe win by 1,146. 1,146 points is the margin of victory for Vaxe. Incredibly close still. But somebody fix this tournament client, by God. Please. It's a Jones and Map, also known as Evil Elvis, also known as Map Deck Deaths, but... Uh, it's basically the epitome, the crown, the king of awkward aim alt. It is the most awkward aim control focused alt map I have pretty much ever seen. But it also has some very difficult slider streams as well. But it might actually be gone in the nerf diff. I actually haven't compared the two difficulties, but I'm gonna see. 
going to see how they do it on this. I think this is something that Vaxay can certainly play, but Alt has just been a Malashevsky skill set in the last year. But Vaxay is going to be finding an early drop on one of those slider doubles. Going to be dropping on that kick slider. Malashevsky still holding on to his 99.5 FC through these beginning patterns. Finding the drop, though, but the accuracy lead for Malashevsky is going to give him an early lead of around 10,000. But there's still a lot of map to go. Still three minutes or so of alt map to go. Gonna see if Vaxay can bring this back with some more combo because as we've seen so far this match, Malashevsky's really been ahead in the accuracy department. He definitely has. I think one thing though for this map is I really don't expect Vaxay to be... I, I think this is like less of a toss-up pick than the hidden one, for example. Um, Vaxay has historically struggled a lot with alt picks at the at both the highest level and even at lower levels i remember back in yuki aim in 2021 even lost alt picks in like round of 32 um, in matchups where you know you really don't expect him to be losing maps at all um, so this skill set is something that he has struggled with for quite a while that said he's keeping it real close right now holding on to combo where malashevsky broke a little bit later on in the map and now might just be able to take this point Again, not to say he's bad at the skill set, but it's definitely something you don't see him picking against a lot of players, at least recently. Um, go back to the perennial and Yuki game, the two most recent wins for him. And oh my god, what did he just hit? Okay. Though? Nah, oh, okay, 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 no, no, okay. No, no, no. he broke on the second one, thank god. I was like, no, 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 you can't do me like this after I talk about this. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hit both of those after I just talked about that. Um, that said, it's still very close right now. I think... If he finds the pop-off in the second half, he can still win this. Malashevsky ahead on accuracy, ahead in combo right now. But Vaxay cannot be counted out of this map because some of the patterns in this are, well, you know, Crackheadius Morbum. Yep, Crackheadius Mortis. But yeah, as you were talking about, I would like to reference, uh, I think it was OWC 2019 when the United States lost, like, one of their three points of that tournament to Turkey on the round of 32 alt pick. So definitely not something that Vaxay is feeling the best on, and Malashevsky has brought that lead up now to around 80,000, up with a 400 combo and a 3% act lead. He's going to be running this one in the ending and taking his third pick. Pretty sure there's nothing Vaxay can do at this point. Yeah, no. Uh, definitely count him out now, because uh, <laughs> Malashevsky decided to pop off. He finally finds a miss here in the last PI or so uh, on some just absolutely absurd linear spacing, but... Yeah, uh, Vaxay kept it close for quite a time until it really just wasn't close at all. Those patterns, by the way, I don't know how both of them hit that. That was kind of crazy. Very, yeah, very really good pick from Malashevsky. Very, very good pick from Malashevsky, and I think should give him a lot of confidence going into any and all of the other alt maps. Of which there are not too many remaining, though. The hidden pool is completely gone. Vaxay banning out the alt map in that pool. I would say... There's still, I guess, an alt map in... If you count DT4, which is tech, as also alt, I'm not really sure if it exactly is, but could be something you might look into. But I think when it comes to pure alt picks, there really isn't much left in this pool. Vaxay doing a good job banning some of that out, but Malashevsky going to be taking that pick definitively by the end of it. And we're going to see how Vaxay responds now. You know, this might just be like, you know, Malashevsky won the last alt pick. This is probably the closest thing we have to an alt pick left in this pool as well as some very difficult aim control as well and finger control. But, you know, if Vaxay picks it, Vaxay picks it. That's something that I guess we just have to accept. Yeah, he does have a Nomad S rank on this map from three years ago, but I don't know how much I trust Nomad when this is on Hard Rock. This map is absolutely demon on Hard Rock, that's for sure. Yeah, there is... I, I don't even know if there's a Hard Rock FC on this. I haven't looked at the there leaderboard. There is not, okay. So that's pretty much all you need to know about this. This map is very iconic, been used in a lot of big tournaments throughout the years, I think most notably OWC 2017, where I think it was a lower difficulty, was won by Poland in order to win the match, but still, this map has been along for a very long time, and I'm sure many players have attempted it with Hard Rock. But you know, right now, Vaxay has kind of a massive, very small lead, he finally drops his combo, so it's gonna go back in favor of Malashevsky for now. Once again, I think, mostly off of the accuracy, all the way up at 98 for Malashevsky, even though Vaxay, about even in the combo, not really going to go anywhere if that accuracy lead is that big. But Malashevsky does finally find a drop from the 200-ish combo he amassed. So the lead is going to be just around 30k in his favor. There's only a third-ish of the map to go, so Vaxay does have time, but he needs to hold through one of the very difficult sections, like the ending part. 
but I don't know if you can do that. That map, or that part of the map is so difficult. Yeah, this accuracy lead for Malashevsky just doing so much work and consistent breaks for Vaxley during the middle part might be the determining factor here, although he holds through that 280 BPM burst. He finally finds a drop. Malashevsky now it's on him not to chain miss, not to break a ton and drop the score a bunch during the ending here. He does find a couple of misses. They're matched by Vaxley. It's 20k. The score lead for Malashevsky right now. Accuracy lead closed in by Vaxley now. Score lead very, very small, still around that 20k mark. Any chain misses from either player at the end here could swing it entirely, but neither it's of them will enough. miss, and it's going to be our first break point of the match. Over to Malashevsky, 4-2, to two, up against Vaxe now. As, like you said, Miles, I feel like it's a bit of a mispick from Vaxe to pick something like Ryoshino Umino Lindworm into Malashevsky. We've talked about how Vaxane, not the best alt player in the world. Malashevsky, one of the best alt players in the world. Yes, it's a hard rock map. Yes, it's a high circle size map. This is, I believe, CS 6.98 or something like that. 6.9 circle size. But not enough when this map's skill set is so favored toward Malashevsky on that one. And now you definitely, I think favor Malashevsky for the rest of this match after that early break point still has access to stuff like the Hard Rock 3. Yeah. I am I am very interested to see how this one goes. Vaxe is known for the ridiculous 10-star aim maps. Like, before there was White Cat aim clips, there was Vaxe aim clips, right? Like, when you go look at the leaderboard for Alter Top Diff, Vaxe is still up there, right? So the raw aim on this player is absolutely absurd. Malashevsky's certainly not bad at it at all. But I, I think a big difference, though, is the BPM here. This is such low BPM aim compared to stuff like Alter or like Rasputin or any of the other like 10 star clip farm aim maps that might end up favoring Malashevsky a little bit. Again, the accuracy difference in Malashevsky's favor looking very, very solid to start things out as Vaxe finding and Malashevsky finding misses kind of all over the place in this map. Bottom left corner for Malashevsky there not working out quite as well. Both of them finding misses even during the quote unquote slow sections because the spacing here is still literally cross screen. Corner jumps are so brutal, man. Both players missing on different corners. I think Malashevsky bottom left, Vaxe top right. Both finding breaks all across this map. It is just so brutal. 8.4 stars. But you know, with the way the star rating system is set up right now, maps like this that are more low BPM, not really emphasis on much tapping, just full screen aim. You can probably call this one of the most difficult maps in the pool. Both players just breaking over and over and over. No one able to really find a foothold on this. The 20k lead only really made by Malashevsky's accuracy lead of about around 1.5%, but Vaxe actually starts to put some combo together, gets about 100 in his pocket, but he drops it once again. It's ridiculous. What, is, what are we watching? That, that, that moment when 100 combo is significant, right? Like, <laughs> this map is just so difficult. Um, really, really hard to get any combo together whatsoever. It's pretty much just act lead giving the score over to Malashevsky right now, who is up at 150 combo, closing in on 200 combo. Can oh he break god. 200? Oh my god, he's done it. Fine. Oh, this is Lord. actually a huge combo for Malashevsky right now. Vaxi has not broken 200 combo at all. Malashevsky's still going with 260 combo to his name, 97% accuracy. He misses on the burst in bottom right. Oh my god, man. Oh. He missed the one stream. <laughs> the one stream no, you in can't the even cross screen aim map. That, that is, oh my god. Okay, but Vaxe misses too. I really don't think there's too much for Vaxe left in this map. He has to hold a combo that maybe surpasses 200 if he wants to win this. Or Malashevsky needs to have a massive act drop. But as I say that, Malashevsky once again eclipsing 200 combo. He's gonna look to take a, about a 50,000 score lead on this, and I really think that's gonna be enough for him to end it. Malashevsky asking who the hell put streams in the aim map. Str two streams. Two streams, by the way, um, in the aim map. <laughs> but is going to win this pick. I don't think there's really any way that this goes to Vaxe's way. And Malashevsky 
really, really solid run on this map. I don't know if this gives you confidence going into something like the Hard Rock one, which is a little bit lower spacing on average due to it being in Hard Rock, but definitely a solid point for him. And 5-2 to two up now against Vaxay, even if you are running out of maps a little bit as Malashevsky. I think this is a very, very good position for him to be in. Just take a couple close points every now and then, and you've got the win in this matchup. You know, this is not a quote-unquote real tournament, but the stakes are very real and the prize is very real. So for both of these players, they really, I think, are going at it with pretty much everything they have. It's a thousand, over $1,000 on the line for the winner of this one match. So for Malashevsky to be up 5-2, to two, looking very, very close to getting that over $1,100 prize for winning the match. I'm not All right, this so, map, though, pure speed yeah, this, this is, yeah. If you looked at the map pool at all, this map kind of stuck out like a sore th thumb as the reading focus pick in the pool. With the Hidden 2 really being, I think, more of an A map than a reading specific pick, you have this, where it's um, approach rate 6 and everything is stacked. And, um, yeah, have fun. <laughs> Let's see how these players fare on it. Malashevsky already finding a lot of breaks, dropping his accuracy down, and Vaxay looks like he did practice it, and there we go. Yeah, this one's uh, pretty much already over, I think. Yeah, if you didn't practice this, there is no way you are going to get a good score on this. Although both players do find drops, Vaxay finally dropping down out of 99%. Uh, Malashevsky really needs to like activate like God Mode or something if he wants to take it back. Although he did improve his accuracy and he's starting to hold on to some combo. He really needs, I think, Vaxay to fall down more than anything, but with yeah. continuing to drop, it's already kind of over, I think, even though there is a couple minutes left. The the accuracy for Vaxay is just too good compared to the act for Malashevsky, who really is just struggling a lot with reading this map, it seems like. I mean, this is AR6 with perfect stacks all over the place and overlaps that double back on top of themselves and just really, really tricky patterns. Vaxay getting a bit of free combo during the easy section as well, boosting the act, boosting the score, and, you know, almost triple score now for Vaxay over Malashevsky. I know... I know sometimes I might get a little bit of flack for saying oh. things are over early on, but I feel like it's warranted for a map like this where you see such a stark difference in how well the players are playing on this map. Just really, really solid play from Vaxave. Does finally find another miss, but I don't think it matters at all as Malashevsky is still not even at 100,000 score over two thirds of the way into the map. Vaxe at 260k and climbing. Still holding 95% accuracy as well. And this looks to be a very good pick for Vaxe. Miles, what was that about some curse? Uh, I, I'm not superstitious, I'm not religious, so I, I'm gonna need you to explain that one for me. It's not my area of expertise. Okay, so the curse is that um, um, Malashevsky tablet area reading precision, 144 hertz. And then you you paint a red circle on your wa your wall. You say um, Cookie Z five times, and then you have Vaxay getting 350k on an AR6 reading pick against Malashevsky when he has under 100k, and the curse is broken. Well, definitely yeah. broken. Uh, <laughs> just as a, I I just some of the. Some of the scores we had for the showcase for this were just crazy. I, I, I they, they are put more into perspective by scores by by Vaxe and Malashevsky playing these maps. Some of the some of the showcase scores we had were truly ridiculous. Um, very mm -hmm. solid stuff from Vaxe on that map. Three sixty k is not an easy feat. This map is absolutely crazy. So six misses. By yeah, the way. six misses on that is really ridiculous you can see over triple score uh less than a quarter of the miscount of Malashevsky and uh 12 percent act up so really really good stuff from Vaxay and now Malashevsky looking to once again find another pick into Vaxay probably not the Nomad 2 this is like markedly easier than the Nomad one. This is 8.3 stars after Hard Rock, which is to say still extremely hard, um, but lower star rating than Ryoshino Umino Lindworm. 
lower star rating than the DT one, lower star rating than the hidden one. So I think very doable in comparison to a lot of the other maps in this pool. This is probably one of the easier maps in the pool overall. So I'm expecting pretty high scores out of the players in comparison to stuff like the Nomad 1 or the Nomad 6 that we just saw. That said, still very, very difficult. Pretty much cross-screen jumps or halfway cross-screen jumps at 214 BPM this time around. Much higher BPM, higher object density, and lower spacing. Vaxay is going to find a miss on one of these build-up sections. Not in the Ki time yet, so early, early miss. Hopefully won't matter too much. But for Malachewski, a very, very fortunate miss for Vaxay to find early on as we get into the first Ki time here. This is where the spacing starts to pick up. And all of these Ki times are pretty much this spacing right here until you get to the very last part of the map. Both players hit the first jump sequence. Can they hit the next one? Vaxay will miss on the buildup, actually, once again. And Maloshevsky, it seems, better at the aim consistency than Vaxay, someone whose aim skill cap was renowned during his time. Now Maloshevsky, the consistency on normal BPN maps really paying off with the Nomad 1 and Hard Rock 1 picks. Malashevsky just looks so comfortable on this. His accuracy is all the way up at 99.85. This guy is playing this like it's four stars, but it is almost eight stars. And Faxe is finding misses on these jumps. That's how you know, despite it being arguably one of the easier maps in the pool, it is just still unreal in difficulty. And Malashevsky just is not turning back now. He is approaching the halfway point of the map, still holding on to this incredible score. Vaxe has reestablished the purple, though, up at around 350 combo, but he really needs a meltdown from Malashevsky if he wants to take this back in the end. He does find that first drop, though, at the start of the chorus section, but Vaxe misaims on a stack screen. That is so tragic now. Looking very dominant for Malashevsky with 120k score of lead. There is not too much left to do, except run this into the end. Uh, even with that miss in the middle for Malashevsky, I don't think it's going to matter all that much. Too many misses for Vaxe, too much act drop. So unless we see a really, really high pop-off from Vaxe at the end here, I think this is just going the way of Malashevsky. Yeah, and but... the hold is the question. This is all relatively easy patterning, so I don't think there's going to be too much of an issue here, but does find a miss again on the slider jumps for Vaxe, and it just becomes so, so difficult to find the comeback when you can't hold that decisive combo. Neither player is going to combo through the slider jump section here as both of them find their misses, and every time they reset like this, it favors Malachev's dunk. Mm -hmm. And that lead is 130k with only a quarter left in the map with the scores being as low as they are with the accuracy being so far in favor of Malashevsky. There's really just nothing Vaxe can do apart from, I guess, hold on to a combo, which he clearly isn't really able to do right now in this part of the map. Up at 270k is his score. Malashevsky just looking overall more comfortable than him on this pick. And he's going to go and ascend onto match point and potentially hand Vaxe his first 1v1 loss. This might just be... I mean, he's going to be at match point after this. Vaxe has to win four in a row now in order to win the match. And Malashevsky, I know a lot of people were doubting whether he could actually win against Vaxe in the 1v1 like this. Here he is to prove the doubters wrong. It looked a, a little bit shaky after Corsi's close last weekend because Malashevsky was shown to be defeatable, but it might just be time for a new era in tournaments as Vaxe now down match points against Malashevsky and Ristol Chomic Box looking to close it out with every single map left in the pool. Three picks remaining if we go to tiebreaker along with that tiebreaker. So four chances for Malashevsky to close this one out. That is 5.8 stars before double time, by the way. Uh, that is all pre-double time stats on there. The star rating goes up to 8.2 stars after DT and AR 10.53 for this map. So let's see how good these players are at aiming sliders 
at 260 BPM on AR 10.5. Mm -hmm. And I guess once again, I'm here swallowing my pride. Just don't question the pick because it's Vaxe. He might have something that we don't know, and he probably does as his accuracy looks a lot more comfortable than Malashevsky out of the start. But knowing Malashevsky, he'll probably adjust to this and his accuracy will rise later. But for now, it's looking, looking Vaxe favored before any of the hard sections, but I think it's really going to come down to some of those key eye sections where the sliders, as Dio said, become very, very long and fast. It's an AR 10.5. DT Tech at this AR is very difficult. Now Shevsky gonna find the first drop. Vaxe looking more comfortable in the beginning of this intense section. Accuracy from Malashevsky down at 91%. Vaxe already up at a 50k lead. And Vaxe, I think as long as he holds on, it's it's looking good for him. And he gets through that first section. Still holding on to the FC, approaching 600 combo. How far can he go? And yeah, you know, against a lot of other players, I feel like Maloshevsky wins this pick because he is very good at these types of maps with double time on. But Vaxe is just a whole different beast when it comes to double time tech. This guy is so ridiculous. Comboed the entire first hard part, missed right at the end. And now we just get uh, actually a lot of free combo, by the way. If he had held through that entire section and not missed at the end of the first hard part, this would have all just been free, free combo for him and free score. As it stands, it's actually Maloshevsky benefiting from this with a little bit of a combo lead did hit the ending to that first difficult part. So a little bit better for Maloshevsky coming out of the first section, but the score lead and the act lead heavily favoring Vaxe. And as we get into the next hard part as well, you have to think that the rest of this map should go Vaxe's way as well. So now I think the rest of this pool looks very, very good. You have double time two, you have no mod two still left open. You pretty much have to pick one of the hard rocks if you are Maloshevsky. And those are not guaranteed picks at all. Reminder, that's a one, the perennial, where Hard Rock 4 originates. Oh, hold on. Might be a little premature to talk about the rest wait, of the pool. Maloshevsky holding combo. Vaxe found a slider break during the next difficult section. Can Maloshevsky hold and close this out? The score lead going down so quickly now. He was not looking good at all during the first section of the map, but suddenly during the back half is looking so, so good. Finally, a slider break, break comes through right at the end. Once again, the player with the higher combo finds the break right at the end of a difficult section. And that is a lifesaver for Vaxe as all of this combo in the last quarter is completely free. It almost certainly would have gone over to Maloshevsky if he had held and not found that slider break. And now, Miles, I think we can talk about the rest of the pool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was one hell of a pick. I thought Maloshevsky found the drop earlier, but it was a combo break, and he just had that sneaky 500 combo, and I wasn't really looking at him. But at the end of the day, Vaxe going to pull through, going to stay alive, get that elusive fourth point against Maloshevsky. But Maloshevsky now, his own pick, has the chance to end it. As you mentioned, I do think it's going to have to go to one of the two hard rocks. So that HR3, HR4, both techier style, more gimmick favored maps. Something like Angel Salad, probably I think less favorable for Maloshevsky. I think the remaining Hard Rock though, that Hard Rock 3, I think probably gonna be something he wants to pick. But I think Maloshevsky might think a little bit hard about this pick, might take up a little bit of that timer, which both of these players have both been picking extremely quickly up on. But let's see, see what he has in mind. Either this or the Nomad 2 to be the last pick for Vaxe. But we're going to see it come out from Maloshevsky this time. Finger control and burst speed along with really difficult aim is the name of the game in this map. Pretty much everyone knows this one already. It's Kimi no Kyoko, map by Akali. Uh, let's see it. Two of the best players of all time on a map which, as of recent, has only become doable double time for a very select few players. This map used to be unapproachable with double time for a very, very long time. And now we get to see two of the best players of all time compete on it in a map pool. Yeah, you know, back early in Vaxe's day, you might have seen this as a tiebreaker in something like a round of 32 for even open rank tournaments. But now up here, it's DT up against Maloshevsky, who looks so comfortable out of the start. He has an FC on this. It is, I believe, his top play. 
and up at 99.85% out of the beginning. I think a lot is really going to hinge on this first break into the chorus section. We're going to see how long either of these players can hold on. I think the first break probably going to be the most crucial. Both players continue to hold through these difficult curved streams. Neither of their staminas are letting up. Malashevsky complaining about the stamina earlier in the match does not look phased one bit by this map. And both players are going to make it through that first part. And I really do think now the first break is really going to be critical to who wins this map. Neither of them refusing to budge at this point. Double full combo still intact. Ever so slight accuracy lead for Malashevsky out of the first Ki time. We are halfway through the map miles and neither player has dropped at all. 98, high 98 act for both players. 98, six for Maxi, 98, eight for Malashevsky. There's a miss on the jump from Malashevsky. He Ooh. drops all the bursts afterwards as well. I think he knows Vaxi is holding on to the combo right now. It's all about Vaxi at this point. How long can he hold? Can he make it through this PI time? If he does, this map is basically over and curse be damned, Vaxi is still looking to remain unassailable in tournaments. Finding the combo through this section, still holding through the doubles, still holding through the jumps into the curved streams not looking to drop at all. Malashevsky finds another drop, and that is it for sure on this map. 200,000 score lead for Vaxe and no combo for Malashevsky. Vaxe is going to take us to his last pick, looking for the tiebreaker against Malashevsky in this show match. No way he FCs this, though. At this point, that is the last thing we're looking at. Vaxe holding on with a 1,780 combo in the last chorus section. Let's see if he can hold on. This would be an absolutely unreal play to get in a tournament setting. Malashevsky continues to drop. It's already over. It's a formality at this point. But can this score be set? Can Vaxe show why, once again, that he is the GOAT? Why he is widely considered the greatest tournament player of all time, even up against start opposition from Malashevsky into the ending? Vaxe gonna be getting an FC on Kimi no Kyoku. <laughs> what that is actually this wild. Warm -ups? No way. Yeah, let no me way. let me see Candyland in warm ups. Oh yeah, Kimi no Kyoku double time. I remember this map. This used to be a tiebreaker back in my day. Let's play a DT and let he me get that care. FC. Let he me get does that FC too. That is absolutely nuts from Vaxe. Not the pick from Malashevsky. This is Vaxe's map. Despite Malashevsky's place on the leaderboard. Wow, what a score and what a way to bring us to last pick for Vaxe. This is the dominance that he displayed so many times from 2018 to 2021 during his prime when he was undefeated for years in tournaments these are the kinds of scores that cemented him as the greatest of all time and he continues to put them out in match as well we can finally say we look smart he finally picked the nomad 2 <laughs> 210 bpm long streams 8.57 stars this is something that vaxe should be incredibly strong on but malashevsky looked very very i guess I guess kind of blown away in the chat. He said, I'm glad at least I got six points, brother. You've still got a map and potentially a tiebreaker to go. And this BPM much lower, something Malashevsky could definitely long stream for ages. But for Vaxe, I think this is just his bread and butter. He won Nomad 2s up against everyone. Players like Bubble Man used to ban Nomad 2 against Vaxe because of how strong he was on this pick. And I think this is something that just Vaxe really should be able to force the tiebreaker on. But out of the beginning, Malashevsky with the accuracy lead up above 99. We have yet to really get into the long streams though, and I think that's really where this map is going to be determined. One big difference though between this Nomad 2 and pretty much any that Vaxe used to play back in the day is BPM. Pretty much nobody got above 200 BPM uh, before 2020, 2021. Um, so a lot of, I think, the comfort on this sort of pick from Vaxe is going to have to come from some added stamina compared to the maps that he used to play. That said, I don't think he's going to struggle too much with the stamina on this pick. It is only 210 BPM and he has looked extremely good on the speed all throughout this match. I think, if anything, the misses for both of these players are going to come from the flow aim in this map. Here we go. 
into the first really difficult section. Neither player has dropped so far. This first hard part is pretty much halfway through as well. Vaxay actually Vaxay. drops first. It's Malashevsky to hold on. And like I said, it's not the stamina. It's the flow aim that presents the highest level of difficulty in this map. As Malashevsky now able to hold on, dropping act due to the stamina loss, but still holding combo. That is all that matters. The longer he holds, the bigger this lead can be as he gets now into a cool down section. He gets to regain that stamina for the next long stream part where he needs that stamina to hold on to the flow aim to hit the streams as God intended. And Malashevsky now might just be able to take this without a tiebreaker, Miles. The Polish Beast is holding. He finally finds the drop. Why he speak? is chaining. He dropped so much accuracy on that stream. Vaxay finally finding another drop of that accuracy lead of his should start to reel in the lead soon as long as he can equalize the combo. But right now, the combo from Malashevsky is able to accumulate a lead of 70,000 score. We're going to see how long that manages to hold. I think the last stream section is going to be what determines this. Malashevsky needs to hold on if he wants to avoid a tiebreaker, but it is all coming down to this ending section. Malashevsky finds another chain miss. His accuracy has just gone so far down into the dumps. Vaxay holds on, but the lead it looks slow to go back. Vaxay finds a drop. Dropping his accuracy as well, and oh, let's, let's, Malashevsky, another drop. The map is very quickly starting to wind down though, and the lead is still 60,000. Faxay, you cannot afford to break there. He finds another drop. It's just about maybe like 40 seconds left. I don't know if there's time for Faxay anymore. There might not be any more time with this low of a combo. It's going to take chain misses from Malashevsky. If he finds a miss on a whole like 32 note stream, it might be doable for Vaxay, but he needs to hold and Malashevsky needs to drop and that is not gonna happen. Vaxay is the one to drop instead and Malashevsky now almost 100,000 score up on this Nomad 2 by the end of the match. His stamina recovered, the curse intact for Malashevsky to continue winning against many of the greatest players of all time and looking to dethrone Vaxay as the greatest tournament player of all time. A spot on the throne finally opening up. That was so close until the very end. Vaxay, we thought this Nomad 2 was so much in his favor, but Malashevsky, the Polish beast, the almost undefeatable tournament player in the last year and a half, gonna be taking the throne from Vaxay, handing him his first L. This is the first time that Vaxay has lost a tournament match since 2017. I believe, I don't believe he lost any in 2018. He definitely did not lose any in 2019. I think this is the first time since 2017 that he has lost a tournament match. He had an undefeated run of matches from then until the end of Yuki Aim tournament in 2021 summer. And Malashevsky has finally done it. He has finally shown that Vaxe is beatable after the last match Vaxay had against Emrek went to tiebreaker and Vaxay came out on top ever so slightly. It is now the Polish prodigy to stand at the top. We are going to get a tiebreaker show match between these two. Unfortunate that the match itself did not go to tiebreaker, but still ridiculously close match between these two seven to five for Maloshevsky and now I feel like the title of tournament goat can start to be worked on by other players I don't think that this one show match gives that title to anyone neither to Maloshevsky nor to Emrek nor to anyone else but definitely there is room for other players now to make the case as we have finally seen Vaxay can be beat. Although it's a little bit past his time, still, the fact that he was able to come here and put on such a show for us, we, we just have to we just have to have a applause for this. It was such a very close show match, and even though Malashevsky won, Vaxay put up such a great fight. But now, yeah, as you say, we can build upon it now. Malashevsky looking to take the throne, but you know, Emrek did beat him last week. So I think we have a really healthy competition at the top now for OC tournaments, and we're going to be getting some inter entertaining matches now, I think, for years to come. 
between some of these players, I don't know how long Vaxay is going to stay along for this little stint back in the Osu community. I'm really glad he's back, but, you know, the question always arises, how much is he going to play? Can he compete at the top? And how many tournaments is he going to sign up for, if any? But still, it's just, wow, what a match this was. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh... I think a lot of people were hoping for this tiebreaker. It would have been very, very fitting for a match between these two players to go to this tiebreaker. Probably the most iconic tournament song uh, ever. This for map. sure. And Well, not this map, but this song. A big reason why many, many players got into O2 tournaments back in 2015. The original Illumator set was tiebreaker in OWC 2015 between the United States and China, which went to bracket reset tiebreaker. This version... You know, it's a little bit harder. It's a just little a bit. bit more difficult. Just a tad. Everything nine this stars. map is way more difficult. It's nine stars, like you said. The spacing goes crazy. The one six streams in this are not stacked. They are space streams. And everything gets way, way more difficult in this map. It's all about the aim control, the finger control, and the skill cap for these players right now. But yeah, you mentioned how iconic this song was. I think this song really opened up, I think, the infamous USA player pipeline. So many USA tourney players drew so much in inspiration from that 2015 tiebreaker victory against China, and Vaxe was the gem of them. He was very much so the best player the United States has ever produced for such a long time, being the tournament GOAT, now going to be facing, I guess, it would have been much more iconic if this were being truly played between the two, but gonna be facing a show match against Malashevsky on this iconic song. I think it means a lot. I think uh, I think very fitting that this song is potentially the last song in tournament that we might see Vaxe play. Um, we'll see if he ever, if he actually is going to sign up for any other tournaments. But I think uh, I think a very fitting end if this is the last song for him in any Osu tournaments, uh, even for several years if he doesn't decide to stick around for any tournaments in his stint in the community, which probably not. Tournaments are such a time investment for mm -hmm. players at the highest level, so not expecting him to sign up for a lot of higher level tournaments. Mm -hmm. Difficulty yeah. name finale as well, just to put the icing on the cake. I I really do wish that Vaxe does sign up for some more tournaments, you know? But yeah, true, USA, true. OWC, round table, we need you. Besides round table, guys. Besides round table. Don't worry about oh, yeah, true, 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 true. We'll yeah, don't think about that. But OWC? There's one like, spot Like, come left. on. Surely. Surely. Surely Vaxe goes to that, right? Find out on the next episode of Osu Ball Z. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if he's in the reveal. We'll see if he's in the reveal. I don't know the players. Uh, I mean, I know who's been revealed, but I don't know the players. I don't know the last one to be revealed. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it's Vaxe. I think a lot of people are really looking forward to uh, seeing him once again in any true tournament. Um, so yeah. Hoping it happens. Hoping it happens. Yeah, meanwhile, this TB is extremely close. Only 20,000 score in favor of Malshevsky on this tiebreaker. Once again, I think due to the accuracy lead, which he has taken, I think during the second half of this match, there was really a turning point where we started to see Vaxe be a little bit more comfortable on the maps than Malashevsky. Started to have some accuracy leads, but then again on this tiebreaker, it's looking very Malashevsky favored in the ending, and it's going to take, I think, a big meltdown for Vaxe to take this show match. Malshevsky is just so good at alt maps, man. Um, I don't know. You know, a map like this is pretty much finger control, aim control, alt. And, you know, aside from the really high spacing jump patterns in the one thirds, pretty much everything. How did he hit that? How did they both hit that pattern? What was that, man? I'm sorry? They, hit, they just hit like the nine star square jump pattern. What's going on? Um, yeah, I don't know. This is a very, very Malashevsky tiebreaker. As you can probably tell by the combo he's got right now, he finally drops on some of the normal jumps, but dear God, bruh, um, that's a that's a ridiculous score. Very, very high score from Malashevsky. Very high combo in the back half of this map. As uh, Vaxe's score is showing you exactly how difficult this map is. And I remember you put Vaxe in on pretty much any tiebreaker, and he was really always the best score, and I feel like a map like this, scores like this, really does kind of put the cap on things that 
it's a new era. It's a new age in OSU tournaments. Vaxay has not been around a real tournament in two years, and the new cream of the crop is just as good, if not better, at the highest level. Yeah, what what an insane performance we saw from both of these players in this show match. That is, I believe, going to be the conclusion of it. No curveballs here. Malashevsky once again going to be taking this All Stars show match by the score of seven to five over Vaxe, and I am very happy I was able to cast this match with you, Dio. Yeah, same here for sure. That is, as what a ridiculous match. What a ridiculous match that we saw between these two.